Hello, we are going to review section 5.1, which is where we talked about simple and compound interest. So the problems I've laid out, uh, the first couple of them, we're going to just write the equation for a simple interest account. Uh, and then we'll take a look at evaluating an equation for a simple interest account. Uh, and then we'll talk about writing uh, equations for compound interest and then evaluating the equations for compound interest. And then the last problem we'll do is going to be a side-by-side -side of a simple interest account versus a compound interest. And we'll be able to compare and contrast uh, the dollar amounts in both of those accounts. Um, so we'll get started with this first one, which is just a simple interest. So what I'm going to do at the very tippy top is write the formula for um, a simple interest account, which is P of T equals and we took p naught the initial amount which we called principal and we added a quantity to this we took p naught times the interest rate uh, and the interest rate was written as a decimal and then we would throw a t on the very end t meaning the time in years so again this number right here if you take your uh, principal amount and you multiply it by the interest rate that's going to be the amount that's going to be added to the account every year um, so that would make it a linear relationship and simple interest is linear. So I'm going to write this equation. Um, the first thing I'm going to do first is take that P naught times R so I can get that value. So I'm going to take the $250 that this person's putting into an account at a 2.5% interest rate. So I'm going to multiply this. Again, make sure you convert the 2.5% to a decimal. So 0 0.025 would be 2.5%. So this value, again, is going to represent the amount that is going into the account every year, which is going to come out to $6.25. Not much at all. So that's what P naught times R would give me. So now what I'm going to do is substitute that back into my equation. So P of T is going to equal, we took our $250 plus we are adding $6.25 every year. So that's why we throw a T next to it then, $6.25 per year. So this would be the slope. If this were written in Y equals MX plus B form, this would be your Y equals, here would be your M, X plus your B amount. Um, so then what you could do also is pause this video. You could try the next one yourself. I'm just gonna roll right into it. Same exact way. I'll stay constant with these colors here. Well, I'll take P0 times R. So if we are depositing $175 into a simple interest account with a 4.5% interest rate, I'm going to take 175 and I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.0425. And this, again, is going to tell me the amount that is getting added to the account every year, which is roughly uh, $7.44. So what I'm going to do is go back now and write my equation. So P of T equals, we take our initial amount, our principal was 175, and we are adding 7.44 T. Okay, so those are pretty basic. You guys have written equations in slope intercept before. This is just a little different with the, the slope value being the, the P naught times R over here. We just did that first in each of these cases. And now what we're going to do is evaluate um, a different equation, uh, also a simple interest though. So in this one, Hector deposits $400 into a simple interest account. Uh, the rate on the account is 5.25%. And here's the function that they're already giving us, uh, represents his account balance as a function of time. So the 400 represents his principal amount. They got the 21 by taking 400 times uh, 0 0.0525. So again, if you take the rate as a decimal and you multiply it by the principal, you will get the amount that you're adding into the account every year. So what we're going to do is calculate his balance after 15 years, which means we are going to be taking P of 15 and evaluating this account after 15 years. Oops. So 400 plus 21 times 15. So that's going to be $400 plus and I'll just break this apart. I'll do 20, uh, 21 times 15 means he's adding $315 interest. So his balance is $715 after 15 years. Okay. Um, and again, if we were to answer this in a complete sentence, you would say uh, Hector's account balance after 15 years is $715. Um, for the next one, 
this is a little bit different. We're gonna determine how many years it will take before his account will reach $1,000. So this is gonna be a P of T value, and we are going to work backwards. Oop, that's a P. And we are going to work backwards and solve um, for T. So what I'm gonna do is take his equation, but I'm gonna substitute a value of $1,000 in for P of T. And we will just have to solve this with some good old algebra. So the first thing that we're gonna do on each side of this equation is subtract 400. So I'm going to be left with 600 on my left hand side equals 21t. So then if you divide both sides by 21, I'm going to end up with um, how many years it will take his account to reach um, $1,000 and it comes out to 28.57. So we have to interpret this answer uh, because you can't have the 28.57 years. If I round down Let's think about it. If I round down, that means I could evaluate this function at 28 years. And what would happen is you would get a number less than $1,000. Because it's going to take um, this little uh, 0.57 of a year past 28 years, that means we would have to round up. So I'm going to write this in a complete sentence at the very bottom here and say it would take 29 years for the account. to reach $1,000. So again, we will have to round up in those cases because if you round down, even if it said 28.2, you'd still have to round up. Because of that little 0.2 of a year, if you round down, you do not have enough time to make that kind of money. All right, and the next problems are gonna deal with compound interest. So what I'm gonna do with these ones, I'll give you a minute to read them over. I'm going to put the compound interest formula up top and that one is going to be a little bit different. So P of T equals, you still start with that initial amount, which we call P naught. But what we're going to do is multiply that by, um, and let's think about this. If we take 100% of your account, 100% as a decimal is one, and we are going to be adding whatever you earn for the interest, which is R, it'll be as a decimal. And since these are exponential equations, your variable T is going to be upstairs here in the exponent spot. So very similar to the last problem, I'm going to get this um, value of 1 plus r first before I write my equation. Um, so what I'm going to do, the 1 plus r, I'm just going to write my interest rate as a decimal, which is 0 0.035. Again, how I'm getting that is just sliding my decimal two spots to the left. So you're going to get a base number here of 1.035. So when I go back and write my equation now, it's going to say P of T equals our original amount, the principal is $1,200. And the base number here that goes in the parentheses is 1.035. And we are raising that to the T power, where T is time measured in years. And again, you can do this very similar to the last problems. If you just want to pause the video, you can try this next one yourself. I'm just going to keep trucking along here. I'm going to do the same exact process. I'm going to take 1 plus R, and it looks like my interest rate in this problem is 1.75%. So I'm going to slide that decimal a couple spots to the left. So it's 0 0.0175, which means your base number here is going to be 1.0175. Uh, and then I'm going to write the equation. So P of T equals take your starting amount, the principal is $300, and my base number, again, we already calculated it, it is 1.0175, and we are raising that to the t power. So all these problems are going to have kind of a similar format because that equation is not gonna change. You are gonna be taking one plus the r because you're adding that interest rate. Um, and again, you are getting 100% of your money plus whatever the interest is. So that's why we use one plus R. If you were just to put R there, you would end up with a really, 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 really insanely small number um, for your base number, and your account would actually shrink in money, and that just wouldn't make sense. So again, the reason why it's a one here is because you're getting 100% of your money back every year, plus whatever you earn in interest. So uh, we're gonna work with these formulas a little bit by evaluating them. So I will do these ones in the calculator. So I'll pull up the calculator. Okay, how these ones will work then. Actually, I should probably set them up first. Um, how these ones will work is we are going to, again, they're giving us the formula. 
and we are going to evaluate this account after 15 years. So I'm going to do the setup first. So I'm going to take the 500 times 1.0325 and I'm going to raise that to the t power. So this is the equation and I'm going to evaluate it at 15. So p of 15. If you take 500 times 1.0325 and we are going to raise that to the 15th power. And order of operations tells us we should do the exponent part first before we multiply. So I'll show you how to throw this into the calculator. So what we're going to do is take 1.0325 and I'm going to raise this to the 15th. And it gives me this number. So my account of $500, the principal amount, will be multiplied by this ugly decimal. So I'm going to take $500 and multiply that. And the account balance after 15 years ends up being $807.83. So again, complete sentence, you would just say Cisco's account balance after 15 years is $807.83. So then for part B, this will be a little bit different. Uh, we'll have to go to the graphing calculator on this. So we want to know how long it's going to take before his account reaches $1,000. Again, this is a P of T value which is like we're giving you the output measured in dollars. So I'm going to pull up the calculator and show you. We're going to go to the y equals. And I'm going to take this equation first and just throw it into the calculator. 500 times 1.0325 raised to the t power, or x power. So again, above the division sign is a little caret key to bring us upstairs. And then the x is between the stat and the alpha buttons. And again, since they're giving us a y value, of $1,000, we are going to put it in under y equals. And then I'm going to set a window. So I'm going to go from 0 years. I'm going to go to 30 years, counting by 1s. Uh, the lowest amount in his account is $0. And I'm going to make a prediction a lot higher. Even though we're only looking for 1,000, I want my window to be kind of zoomed out. So I'm going to go all the way up to 1,500. And I'm going to count by 100. So I'll leave this window up here for a sec, just so you can take it down in your calculator. And then I'm going to hit graph. And again, it's going to give me a window a little bit bigger. And I'm hoping to see the curve, which is going to take absolutely forever. And then I'm hoping to see a line crisscross it at a value of 1,000. And again, this intersection is what we're going to be focused on. We know that the y value of that intersection is the 1,000 that I put in, because that was a y value. And all of our x values are t values. So this will give us, if we find the intersection, it will give us the amount of time. So I'm going to hit second trace, go down to the fifth option, which is intersect, hit enter, hit enter, and I'm going to slide the cursor over here to where I think the intersection is. And I get 21.67. So I'll write this down, I get 21.67. Again, let's interpret this answer. If I round down, that means after 21 years, his account would not quite reach $1,000. He'd probably be at like 900 some dollars maybe. But he needs this 0.67 of a year in order to reach 1,000. So just to be safe then, we round up and we say it will take 22 years for the account to reach $1,000. Okay, so again, we're rounding up in this case because we want enough money in there. We want that $1,000. And by rounding up, we will end up with a little more than $1,000. Um, so the last problem, what we're going to do is compare a simple interest and a compound interest balance uh, by using a table. So the first thing we'll do is fill in, we'll uh, fill in the units by looking at our quantities here. Time is going to be measured in years. Your balance well, uh, simple interest and compound interest, both of them will be measured in dollars. And then we'll create the expressions. And that's what I'll do off to the side. So for a simple interest, we used P of T equals P naught plus we did P naught times R times the quantity T. And for the compound interest, we did P of T equals, we took P naught and then we did 1 plus r, and we raised that to the t power, again, in the exponent spot because it's an exponential function. And now what I'm going to do is um, substitute some values in. So my p naught is the $2,300. And I'm going to be adding, in my calculator, I'm going to take 2,300 
times the interest rate as a decimal, which is 0 0.0375. And that's going to give me the amount um, that the account earns every year, which is going to be $86.25. And we throw the T on the outside. So this is the expression that's going to go right here. We'll do 2300 plus 86.25 T. And that's the simple interest one. Now we'll do the compound interest. So I'm going to take my P0 amount, which is the 2300 again. And now I'm taking 1 plus my interest rate of 0 0.0375. And we are raising that to the T power. So this is going to come out to 2300 times 1.0375 raised to the T. And I'm going to write this here for my expression. And now what we're going to do is just fill in some values of the table. So the first couple years, uh, or the first couple values in this table are going to be the easier ones because after zero years, he has $2,300 in both accounts. So 2,300 here and then 2,300 here. And now I'll walk you through the process of evaluating after two years. And then what I'll do for five and 15 is copy the values into here and you guys will be able to calculate them. Um, so after two years, what I'm going to do is evaluate this top equation as P of two which means I'm going to substitute a value of 2 in for t. So I'm going to take 86.25, multiply it by 2, and I'm going to add it to the original amount, which was $2,300. And I end up with $2,472.50. And what I'll do for the other one then, to evaluate p of 2, again, it's an exponential function. so uh, I'm taking this equation where my cursor is, and I'm going to be substituting 2 in for that. And again, you'll want to do the exponent value first. So I'm going to do 1.0375. Um, I'm going to raise that to the power of 2, and I'm going to then multiply it by 2300. And I end up with $2,475.73. So this account is a little bit more, only a few bucks more after two years. But you'll see when I copy in these other values how much, um, how much time really matters with an exponential function. It's going to grow a little bit faster. So with these next ones, when I copy them in, you'll see the difference. If I evaluate um, the linear function after five years, which is the simple interest, uh, the account balance is this much, $2,731. And then if you do the other account, the compound interest, now the accounts are about $30 apart. So they keep getting more and more apart. And this second column here for compound interest is going to grow a little bit faster. So now we do after 15 years, this account for simple interest ends up being 3,593.75. And the other side will be 3,999. Uh, 3 uh, 95 rather, 0 0.30. So now the accounts are almost $400 apart after 15 years. So this column on the right hand side for compound interest is going to grow a little bit faster. Um, and then you'd be able to answer any sentences or uh, any questions about these. If I ask um, which account you'd prefer to put money in, obviously it would make sense to put it in the compound interest because you're earning a little bit more money. And that is it.